now let's see about uh, deadlock prevention the best example for deadlock prevention is taking the medicine before the disease so before the disease only we have to take the medicine so that is the best example for deadlock prevention so that means during operating system design only the corresponding operating system designers or manufacturers takes necessary precautions so that deadlock doesn't occurs in the system here we know that uh, there are four conditions if those four conditions occurs simultaneously in the system then there is a possibility that deadlock may occur so the necessary conditions for a deadlock to occur are mutual exclusion hold and wait no preemption circular wait if we eliminate one of these four conditions then we can say that there is no deadlock in the system why because a deadlock may occur if all these four conditions occurs simultaneously in the system so here our target is we should eliminate one of these four conditions even if we eliminate one of these four condition then we can say that there is no deadlock uh, let's check uh, whether we can eliminate uh, any one of those condition or not so what is the first one mutual exclusion mutual exclusion means uh, a process can use us only one resource at a time that means all the resources are non shareable by default it is not possible to share a resource simultaneously among multiple processes if we try to share a single resource among multiple processes simultaneously then it will produces wrong results let's take the example of a printer let printer is shared between the process p1 and process p2 and if we perform printing then we will get the combination of p1 and p2 process as the output so that means it is producing wrong results so it is not possible to eliminate mutual exclusion so can we eliminate mutual exclusion so it is not possible it is not possible to eliminate mutual exclusion why because by default all the resources are non shareable if we share a single resource simultaneously among multiple processes then we can say that mutual exclusion is eliminated but that is not possible it is not possible to share a resource simultaneously between multiple processes so we can say that it is not possible to eliminate mutual exclusion now let's see the next one what is the next one hold and wait so we know what is hold and wait a process is holding some resources and is waiting for other resources let's take an example let we have two processes here so p1 p2 two resources here r1 r2 let p1 is holding r1 and p2 is holding r2 p1 is waiting for r2 p2 is waiting for r1 so this situation is called as hold and wait here p1 is holding r1 and is waiting for r2 if we observe about p2 p2 is holding r2 and it is waiting for r1 so this situation is known as hold and wait if hold and wait occurs in the system then there is a possibility that deadlock may occur now let's check is it possible to eliminate hold and wait or not there are two approaches in order to eliminate hold and wait the first approach is a process can request for a resource only when that process is holding no resources so what is the first approach here a process can request for a resource only when that process is holding no resources so if the process doesn't hold any resources then only that process has to put a request for other resources so here there is only 
weight is there there is no hold here there is no hold here so that's why we can eliminate in this way we can eliminate hold and weight there is no hold situation here only weight situation let's see the second situation first the process has to put the request for all the resources let us assume that a process requires five resources in order to complete its execution so first the corresponding process has to put the request for the five resources so once the process has acquired the five resources then only the process has to start the beginning of the execution so here also there is no wait here no hold and wait problem here once the process acquired all the resources then only it has to start execution but the disadvantage of this approach are the first disadvantage is the poor utilization of resources let us assume that the process has acquired five resources one of the resources is printer but when printer is needed at the last page only the printing is needed okay let us assume that in order to execute that process we are taking one hour of time so during the 59 minutes or during the one hour printer will sit as idle why because we can make use of printer only at ending so we are not utilizing the efficiency of the printer in an effective manner there may be a possibility that some other process may waits for that printer for for that one hour period of time so that problem is known as starvation if a process waits for a resource for a so much of time then it is known as starvation so what is the disadvantage of the second approach poor utilization of resources and the second disadvantage is starvation but we can eliminate hold and wait it is not possible to eliminate mutual exclusion whereas we can eliminate hold and wait by using these two approaches now let's check whether we can eliminate no preemption or not we know what is no preemption a process cannot release a resource until and unless it has completed its execution that means a process can release a resource only after its execution during middle of the execution a process cannot release the resource and uh, now let's take a scenario where operating system can release the resources let's take an example here here we have process pi let process pi puts a request for resource rj but resource rj is allocated to some pj so here what is the point here process pi puts a request for resource rj but that rj is allocated to pj so whenever pi puts a request for rj then operating system founds that this resource is not available this resource is allocated to some other process so what the operating system will do is operating system will checks whether pi has any acquired resources or not if pi holds any other resources then operating system forcibly releases those resources and allocate those resources to the processes which needs them and after some time pi may request for rj so this is the first situation this is the first solution now let's see the second approach let this pj the process pj is waiting for a resource called rk so here pi puts a request for rj but this uh, this rj is allocated to what pj but here pj is waiting for rk so operating system knows that this pj is waiting for rk so operating system forcefully releases the resource from pj and it allocates that rj to pi so pi can completes its execution with rj as well as if there are any acquired resources with those resources pi can completes their execution and once its execution is over then operating system allocates this rj to the pj so this is the second approach so here what the operating system is doing operating system is forcibly releasing the resources so we can say that if we implement these two approaches then we can eliminate no preemption also so here it is not possible to eliminate mutual exclusion 
we can eliminate hold and wait we can eliminate no preemption and now let's check whether we can eliminate circular weight or not so we know what is a circular weight uh, this fashion is known as circular weight here p1 is waiting for r2 but r2 is allocated to p2 and p2 is waiting for r1 this r1 is allocated to p1 so here it is uh, each process is waiting in circular fashion so this is known as circular weight now let's check whether we can eliminate circular weight or not we can eliminate here the circular weight now let's see how we can eliminate the circular weight uh, in order to eliminate the circular weight uh, here operating system uses a mapping function called f f maps from r to n here r stands for resource type n stands for an integer here uh, operating system defines an integer for each resource type let for printer the integer value is 1 for scanner the integer value is 2 like that okay so for each resource type an integer value will be assigned uh, here let us assume that uh, a process is holding resource ri then the process can request for resource rj only if f of rj is greater than f of ri so here what is the point a process is holding resource ri then a process can request for resource rj only if f of rj is greater than f of ri let us assume that here uh, we have process p1 process p1 needs three resources r3 r r6 r4 okay so first it puts the request for r3 so what is f of r3 f of r3 means let us assume that it will return 3 as the output so what is the next value here what is the next integer value okay 364 here we have to request for the resources in incremental order so next we have to request for r4 f of r4 so here f of r4 may return 4 so 4 is greater than 3 okay next the process has to put a request for r6 so next here we have f of r4 next f of r6 so here the point is very very simple let we have p5 p5 needs three resources r6 r3 r2 here the corresponding process has to put the request for the resources in incremental order so first the process has to put the request for r2 and then r3 and then r6 if each process uh, provides the request in incremental order then circular weight condition doesn't arise so here the point is we can eliminate mutual uh, it's not possible to eliminate mutual exclusion whereas we can eliminate hold and weight no preemption circular weight so this is about deadlock prevention